We had a recent inquiry from a customer who wanted to do modal analysis on an extremely large model. We suggested the supernode solver. The problem was the model contained joints, and the MPC-184 elements involved in the joint definitions prevented supernode solver from being used. Here I have a structural model, and I'm using the same model to do modal analysis, but I'm not making it pre-stressed modal. I've not connected the solution of the structural run to the modal run. I just wanted to work off the same model. Let's go see what we have. Here's a structural analysis. Here's a modal analysis. Now, in order to do this modeling, I found that if you use constraint equations to imply the action of a joint between two things, then you can use the supernode solver for the modal analysis. I started out by creating a joint. So I can create one. I insert a joint. I indicate the reference side. I indicate the target side. And I can go and find the reference coordinate system and I can use transformations to orient it as I might like to. This joint would prevent me from using the supernode solver, but I can use the trick of right-clicking and promoting it to remote point. This in fact creates two remote points. After I've promoted it, I can delete the particular joint. I've done this in advance, and here are two remote points. One that came from the reference side, the other came from the mobile side, and the reference coordinate system is back here. This reference coordinate system ended up under coordinate systems because of the promotion of the joint to remote points. I went to it and I reoriented it with a transformation. In this way I got an axis where I wanted it to be for the purpose of some arbitrary joint orientation. I did some quick testing in static structural and then I went on to the modal analysis. Now I created a constraint equation and I made that constraint equation be between the reference remote point and the mobile remote point. <clears throat> I gave coefficients of 1 and minus 1 and what I did with this constraint equation was tie together the x displacements of the remote points for the two sides of what had been a joint. I right-clicked and duplicated it. I made five more copies, so a total of six, and went through them, and I constrained Y movements, there's the one and the minus one, Z movements, and went on and did it for rotations around X and Y and Z. Here I suppressed one without constraint around Y. I'll go up and look at this thing. Without constraint around Y, I'm going to get revolute joint movements around this Y axis centered on that point. So I'm getting joint-like behavior, but I don't have any joints in here. So when I go into analysis settings for the modal analysis, I can request the supernode solver. Let's have a look at what I get. I go to Solution, I right-click, and I Solve. I can click Solution Information and see what scrolls by. And when I check results, if I scroll down, let's have a look. I do not have any MPC-184 elements, as are used in a joint, so that's not going to prevent using the supernode solver. And if I scroll down further, it says S-node calculations, implying the supernode solver. 
and I go down here and here are frequencies that were calculated. Frequencies from supernode Eigensolver. Now in a model as small as what I'm looking at here, there's the mesh, I obviously don't need the supernode solver, but if this was a huge model involving millions of degrees of freedom, and if I wanted hundreds of modes of vibration, the supernode solver could be very helpful in letting me get the job done. Because of that revolute joint-like behavior, I do have a virtually zero frequency. If I scale that displacement auto-scaled, now I can go in and I can observe the behavior if I animate that zeroth mode. And what we're seeing here is a movement around that oriented y-axis. The y-axis that we see here in green. The other modes are at higher frequencies. Here's one at 7194 hertz and we can see how it vibrates if we animate and a higher frequency still involves a torsional deformation. In short then, by going to constraint equations, up to six of them, rather than working from a joint, you can free up the degree of freedom that you want for a joint behavior, and under analysis settings you can successfully use the supernode solver. I hope that'll be of interest to those of you working with very large models for modal analysis. Thanks for joining me.